uh, Alan Turing and Enigma um, demonstrated that um, no form of uh, cryptography, any form of cryptography can eventually br be broken all through history when you had Navajo and you know, various types of cryptography. There was always something that no, nobody imagined that would crack it. Um, do you believe that to be true or not? Yeah, absolutely. All forms of cryptography can be broken. All Cl forms of cryptography that, are eventually broken. That is a truism. Including that behind Bitcoin? Including that currently behind Bitcoin, yes. The question again is time scale. You see, the real secret of the enigma was the secret of the broken enigma. The reason uh, Bletchley Park was successful in essentially winning World War II, at least for the North Sea and the British forces, um, was because they managed to hide the secret of breaking Enigma. Because what would have happened if the secret that they broke Enigma leaked? Enigma would have been improved and changed, and the damage that they had managed to cause, which at that point was complete and systemic capture of all of the cryptographic communications of the Germans, would have been contained. And so they would only be able to capture the Enigma machines that hadn't yet upgraded. Isolation was the downfall of that system, because by definition it had to be isolated. So the lesson we need to learn is we expect cryptography to be broken. We expect every system and subsystem within Bitcoin eventually to be weakened. And what we need to do is one, make sure that any such weaknesses are not systemic and complete, and then identify the weaknesses early enough to start addressing them so that they don't become systemic. And the best way you do that is by existing in an open, collaborative environment where you learn about those weaknesses. If ECDSA gets hacked today, or becomes weak today, what does that mean? Does that mean that every person in the world can suddenly crack ECDSA at any scale? No. It will mean that for a certain class of very well-funded attackers, certain types of ECDSA with an enormous effort can be cracked. At which point, our friend Greg back there will be building a side chain that doesn't use SEP. 256k1, <laughs> SecP 256k1. In fact, the example of the Schnorr signatures implementation on uh, Elements Alpha already shows you the possibility of having a Bitcoin subsystem that allows for a variety of uh, signature technologies to be used within the Bitcoin ecosystem. There's no reason why we all need to use ECDSA. We can add a patch to the system that recognizes, um, let's say. Uh, Apple's curve that they use, I don't remember what it's called, it's a long number, um, or that uses a completely different cryptographic system. Uh, I'd probably select something um, created, verified, audited by Bruce Schneier. <laughs> but uh, the bottom line is that you could create, in fact, an ecosystem where you don't rely on any single curve, and therefore the system is robust because every customer can pick which curve they want to use or which signing system they want to use, so that even if one of them was compromised, it only compromises a subset. That's possible to do today. The real question we need to ask is like two weeks ago, SHA 1 was shown to be weak. Eventually, SHA 256 is going to be weak. And at that point, um, we had better have reached the point in the curve where fees matter more than rewards, otherwise the consensus mechanism won't let us upgrade. Um, but there are always weaknesses. No cryptographic system lasts forever, which is why you don't want to bake it into a permission ledger behind a wall that nobody ever inspects, maintains, or updates, um, because then it's going to become weak. And in fact, those systems are going to become monocultures. They will lack security biodiversity to use a to use the term strangely but they will lack the diversity required bitcoin is not very diverse today but it is getting more diverse and will continue to get more diverse and more robust